Greetings, Mavuno. My name is Moridi Wanjao. I am the senior pastor of Mavuno Church, also known as Pastor M, and I'm so excited that you're worshipping with us today. Last week, I uh, shared a heads up about one of some of the things we're excited about in this coming year, uh, some of the things that we are really, really passionate about 2022. We believe that 2022 will be a year of unprecedented spiritual growth, culture change, church growth, and also financial freedom for us as a church community. And uh, if you missed that video for any reason, I want to just encourage you to go on our website, www.mavunochurch.org and check out for the Free the Future uh, button and click on that because I think it's just going to encourage you. Some of the things we're excited about and we're trusting God for as a church, for every one of us in this coming year. Now, I also want to uh, share that we're, we're, we want, we're going to be challenging every single one of us uh, to consider uh, giving a fast food offering uh, early next year to help us pay off uh, the mortgage for our Hill City uh, headquarters. Now, I want to just talk a bit today about fast food offerings because many people ask, what are fast food offerings? How do they work? Are they biblical? And, and I want to talk about uh, the fact that Moses uh, was the first in the scripture that he was a great lawgiver who talked about fast food offerings. And he wrote in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 4, the first fruits of your grain, of your wine, and of your oil, and the first fleece of your sheep you shall give to him. So, so this concept of uh, first fruits, it was rooted in Israel's history, though a, 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 a farming people. And uh, basically what happened at harvest time, they had been uh, sowing and putting all their crops in the ground or looking after their sh uh, sheep. Uh, or their animals and harvest time will be the time when they are getting a benefit back for all their hard work and what God challenged them is every time that when the time came to give their harvest when the harvest came they would take the best part of it the first part of it and they would bring it bring it to his house uh, as a way of just saying thank you uh, to the one who had given them everything uh, it showed that they trusted God enough to provide for the rest uh, of the year uh, for them now the first the word fast fruit is actually a Hebrew uh, the, the word that the scripture uses a Hebrew word it's called it's bikurim and what it means is the promise to come bikurim the promise to come for the Israelites giving the fast fruits was a way of freeing their future it honored God and it provoked him to bless all the harvest that would come afterwards. And you, you see it all throughout the Old Testament. King Solomon wrote in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, Honor the Lord with your wealth and the first fruits of all your produce. Later on, the great nation builder, Nehemiah, he wrote to, uh, of himself and of his leaders, Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 35, he says, We obligate ourselves, uh, we obligate ourselves, speaking about him and his leaders, to bring the first fruits of our ground and the first fruits of all, uh, of every fruit of every tree, year by year to the house of the Lord. So this is a, a great leader in Israel and he's saying, this is what's going to happen going forward. We as God's people, every year, we're going to bring a fast fruit uh, to God's house. And in the New Testament, this concept is still found, but it takes on a more symbolic meaning. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20, Paul talks about the, uh, Jesus Christ being the fast fruit of all who have gone, uh, who have fallen asleep. And basically what he was saying is Jesus was God's first fruit. He was his, his best, his one and only son, uh, the, the best gift he had to give to humanity. And in the same way that God asks us to give our best, our first to him, that God gives Jesus as the first fruit uh, back to us. Now, because we're not a farming community, fast fruit today looks very different for different people. Uh, maybe it's your first paycheck of every year. I know there are several people in our congregation, this is their practice. And every year they give their first paycheck uh, as a way of saying, God, we honor you. Uh, and we know that everything that is to come, you will provide and make enough. Uh, it could be a bonus at work. For some people, it's their bonus at the end of the year and they give their, their bonus and they say, this is what our first fruit is. Uh, for some of you, it's in, you're in business and it's your first business income in the year. Or it could be a dividend check or a rent check if you're a landlord. Uh, these are all harvest time moments when your hard work is paying off and they're great opportunities to turn back to God and say, Lord, in gratitude for all our blessings, here is my first fruit. Now, I wanted to teach a bit about that, just to give you a bit of a biblical background, to say that yes, fast fruits are biblical, and yes, uh, we do practice them in these times, but I want to just prepare you as you're preparing to give your first fruits uh, in the new year, uh, over and above your ties to help us uh, free our future as a church family. The thing I want to say is I'm excited about the journey of faith and what it's going to open up for every one of our families as we take this step in faith and in trust 
uh, of the Lord who provides for the rest of the year that is to come. Now, I want you to just feel free to write any questions. Uh, if you have any questions, write me, uh, write us. Uh, you can use info at, uh, at, at mavunochurch.org. Uh, if you have any thoughts you'd like to contribute or questions you'd like us to converse, I'm planning to just talk about uh, this adventure, Free the Future, that we're entering into uh, over this next uh, month uh, just to prepare us so that we get ready for January and the, and the year that is to come. And so if you have any questions you'd like us to address in that time, let me know. You can uh, also uh, just let us know whether you're, or what you're excited about. Those of you who've given uh, fast fruits before, what has been your experience? We'd love to hear your stories and maybe share some of your testimonies. Uh, I'll be talking next week about the difference between tithes and offerings and first fruits. Because again, that's a question that's come up for several people. But for now, allow me to just pray for us as we worship God with our tithes and offerings and we prepare to hear his word. Father, we thank you for the month of December. We thank you for the exciting news that the year is coming to an end and that you've seen us through another year. And Lord, it's been a hard year for some of us. It's been a good year for others. But Lord, in every essence, we are here and we give you thanks for the year that has been. And Lord, as we prepare our hearts to give, I pray that Lord, you would just build us uh, in us a sense of gratitude, a sense of joy at the fact that we have a God who is our provider. Lord, as we come towards the end of the year, I pray that this year would end well for every single one of us in every way. And Lord, as we give to you uh, in thanksgiving, as we prepare our heart for the next year, Lord, I pray that you'd give us a sense of hope for 2022. I pray that you'd give us a sense that this will be a great year for us because you've already spoken into this year. And Lord, I speak a blessing over your people. Lord, as we prepare now to hear your word, as we prepare to hear this word that reminds us who we are as a people, reminds us about Christmas and what it means to us. I pray that Lord Jesus, you would give us a sense of joy, expectation that God is with us. And so I speak a blessing over you, God's people, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And God's people say it together, amen.